Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to PricesKing.com. This is Sut. We're talking about diving into the futures trading and what's happening, right? Tomorrow, today, is going to be the interest rate cut that's about to happen. The Fed is about to cut interest rate. With Whether we know if it's a 25 basis point or a 50 basis point, we don't know until we find out, right? But whatever it happens, there's going to be a lot of movement in the markets. So get ready. You want to be on the right side, but at the same time, you don't want to take the risk, right? If you're a day trader, this is where you make money. If you're a swing trader, you want to maybe watch and be careful what's happening, right? Especially if you're just an investor, uh, you want to take a look and see what, what they're going to be doing, right? If there's a big interest rate cut, that's going to spook the markets, right? Because that's what basically Fed is saying, hey, I'm going to cut the interest rate a lot bigger because there's turmoil in the markets and we need to get ahead of it, right? Uh, forget about soft landing, but let's get ahead of it. And because of that, that notion will bring out fear in everybody saying, hey, well, okay, the market is bad. And if you see a 25 basis cut, that just basically saying, okay, the Fed said what they were going to say, do, and they're going to actually cut slowly, gradually, and maybe in increments of, you know, every other month or every month, we don't know, right? But that just kind of gives you a smoother ride right and that could just basically mean okay all right here's a cut we expected it the market may not shoot up like crazy it may not shoot up down crazy either it may just linger around and the, the day traders will make money and the, you'll see a big red candle a big green candle and whatnot and at the end of the day when when you just have a simple you know small rate cut um you know you may see that if the the bulls are in control you'll see a gradual upward trend but it won't be like a huge green candle but in the same thing if it's the opposite right there'll be a very small candle red and that may you know not just like bleed all the way but if you see that big rate cut just be very careful right and so when we're talking about that let's talk about the three instruments the nq the es and the ym right the nq everybody knows the nasdaq 100 future contracts right it tracks the performance of the nasdaq 100 index it composes of like the 100 largest non-financial companies listed on the nasdaq stock market right things uh, companies like apple amazon microsoft these are all highly volatile and they make attract you know they're very attractive to traders uh, and they want to make and capitalize on big moves, right? And NASDAQ will, as you see, you'll see that in, in this particular instance, like, like you see, big red candles down, big green candles up. Um, it's a very volatile, right? So when the rate announcement happens, you'll see on the NASDAQ big, big swings, right? And uh, the same thing with the YM and ES, but it won't move as large, right? The ES, uh, as everybody knows, is the E-mini S&P 500 future contracts, right? It tracks the S&P 500 indexes. It consists of a lot of the 500 largest index companies, such as, uh, you know, so many of them, right? Um, and, and they're very volatile as well, but you'll see that ES traders are very, you know, not, um, they're, they're very savvy, but at the same time, they're tighter spreads, right? So they, they want to be able to capture quickly, not stay in it for too long. Whereas the NASDAQ, you know that it's moving really fast up and down. And swing traders, they like to look at the ES uh, a, a lot more than the NASDAQ, right? Uh, and then lastly, the YM, right? The YM is the E-mini Dow, Ind uh, Dow Industrial Average Contracts, right? Uh, it, it, the symbol is YM. And it basically tracks the Dow, that which consists of like the 30 companies like Boeing and Coca-Cola and Goldman Sachs and all those, right? And so they, they tend to more move more conservatively and than the, the NQ. Uh, and there's plenty of opportunities in the YM as well, right, for large caps. Uh, so these are the different instruments that we're going to be talking about in this particular video, right? So let's take a look at, uh, let's, let's talk about the NQ first, right? This is the daily chart of the NQ. I have the fibs already placed here. As you can see, the, the, the fibs in the past few weeks and months, they've already gone up to the 100 and then came back down, right? So now, right now, we're hovering around the 88.6. That could be a support. And tomorrow, when the, they cut the rates, this is going to be a huge play, right? So what's going to happen is it's either going to go towards the 100 or it's going to go back down to the 78.6 on the FIPS, right? As you can see, this is my RAM indicator that I follow. 
uh, what basically just so that everybody knows is when the the price action crosses above the ram indicator gives you a bull indication that the price continues to go up when it crosses below it tends to have that little bearish connotation to it and then again when it crosses up again you'll see that leg up crosses down there's going to be a leg push or down and then then what you do is you kind of gauge and put yourself into a position where okay where is my support where is my resistance right when, when these cross happens right uh, and then you can you can mark these as your indication like okay you know what this is the previous lows so that's exactly what ended up happening it kind of touched it and then went right back up and then it crossed and then came back down again this became a little bit of support but then i broke the support and went down back to the 78 kind of 78 became a support and then it kind of went back up and now we're here we are at the 88 tomorrow's going to be volatile be mindful of this spot as well as if it crosses below the ramp i'm going to try to keep this live right around the time when the market is uh, when the fed is going to announce the rates are going to cut so that you can actually see how it's behaving and i'll have all three windows open uh, so with that said let's move on to the es and see where, where the es is going all right so here's the es again i have the ram indicator on it and as you can see last few months just been up ripping it since last year right uh, ripping it up 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 there was a downward spiral right around here uh, back earlier this month uh, august and then creeped back up so again looking for that particular support line once it was down below the ram indicator you have to look for that support line and see where it was and that's it kind of caught it right around this area and if this had broken, then the next support would have been this, which is the 49.59. Right, so that's how you kind of want to look at it. You have to take a step back and see where it's gonna go. Now, then what happened? It would creep back up. And if you're, this is strictly price action, right? You're not paying attention to any news cycles. Sure, you know the news cycle will help in seeing how much speed some of these movements will have. Uh, but if you kind of look at it and take a step back on a daily chart, you'll see what's really happening, right? In the past few days, it has been on, on a rip, rip, rip up. Now you're going towards the top, right? And you've, you've seen the, the high hit on this, right? And so now you kind of wonder like, okay, tomorrow, what's going to happen when the Fed rates or, or raises rates or cuts rates, right? Um, there's room certainly for a downturn and that may happen and, and it may go back down to 55 33 that's certainly a possibility uh, but if it does come back down it may sl slowly come back up and try to blow out the high okay so just be mindful of those opportunities and that where you can actually come in and and go long perhaps right and and, and those opportunities will come back um, so if you're a day trader that's what you're looking at if you're a swing trader you know I would be mindful about these longs right you got a whole bunch of green candles tomorrow's a fed day there may be a big green candle up uh, but that green candle may be shut down by the bears and it might come down so just be very mindful if you want some additional context you look at the macd and see where things are going right look at the macd right it's on, on the highs right here looking for a downward trend but it could happen it may have some room forward to go up a little bit but it is it is on the high side right so be mindful that it could come down uh, there could be some pressure on, on the, the bulls to kind of take it up um, and then let's go ahead and take a look at the data. so on the Dow let's see what's happening here one of the best things about futures trading you know it's leverage right obviously you guys know this right so a lot of this stuff comes with in increased risk so be mindful of that make sure you talk to your financial advisor if these things are right for you or what that uh, but you know trading all three of these instruments uh, has its own perks and it has its own risks right so be careful uh, so on the own ym again remember the ram indicator as soon as it crosses it's on its upward trend cross below downward and it kind of kind of took that 50 percent on the fibs kind of made it a support look at that it, it actually did it once twice three times and then it kind of just rolled back itself up uh when it went down kind of tried to come down but that 50 kind of held it in i'm sure if you had 
um, the ability to look at price action on the volume side, right, you, you'll be able to see that there'll probably be a lot of buy orders right around here, which took it upwards, up, 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 and it crossed over to 61.8. It kind of went back up, and 61 became a little bit of support, and then it broke that support and went back right down, right, and it came back, and then it went right back up. Um, and now, if you see this trend, it's slowly creeping up. Now, that creep up could be very dangerous, right? Because now you have this high, you don't have any resistance point up, up, above, right? So it could just, if you're short, it could just like bite you in the ass and just go the opposite way, right? And, and kind of ruin your shorts. Uh, but at the same time, you'll see the past few days, it's just kind of ripped up, 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 up. Um, there's some room for downward pressure for sure i mean if you look at this price action there's certainly downward that's capable right so be mindful of that if you're a short-term trader you can actually take that volatility in if you're swing traders and if you're investors looking at you know the broader market and seeing where things are going to be headed uh, tomorrow is going to be kind of uh, a challenge right be be very careful about what you do um, you know don't get caught on the wrong side. Uh, you know, I've, I've known a lot of futures traders. Sometimes they're down 100K in a matter of minutes. Uh, obviously, there's good days where they're up 50, 60. But when you're down 100K, that could easily, if it continues to bleed, go down to negative 300, negative 400. You don't want to be stuck in that position. Uh, sh you, know, you don't want to be adding more positions and waiting out. Uh, mind you, next week is contract expiration as well, right? So your third, third Thursday of every month, every quarter, you want to be mindful of those expirations and trying to you know, switch contracts and whatnot. So with that said, I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know what your comments are. Let me know what you think, what the Fed is going to do, whether they're going to be raising interest rates, cutting them, and then where do you think these instruments are headed outside of the individual stocks? Let me know about the features. Thanks for watching. Press the screen.